Hi, I'm here to talk to you about something really exciting. Uniform certification, synergistic effects, uniform testing, cum cumulative effects, and toxic chemicals. Basically the uniform crisis in general. First we're going to start with some basic information about toxic chemicals. Oh, okay. My dog just walked in. Sorry. Okay, so, so under the Toxic Substance Control Act of 1976, 80,000 chemicals were grandfathered in. That means there are 80,000 chemicals on the market that have never been tested for safety. And every year, 2,000 new chemicals come on the market and they aren't tested for safety. So basically, in the United States, chemicals are innocent until proven guilty. In Europe, over 1,300 chemicals have been banned. In America, 11 have been banned. When it comes to clothing, CPSC regulates. Uh, I use that word loosely because there is no list of prohibited chemicals, which means they can make the technically true statement that every single piece of clothing is safe, simply because there is not one prohibited chemical in a single item of clothing. And I know that sounds crazy, like who would do that, but I've been doing some research on crematory emissions and I learned a lot. I've learned a lot about safety standards, writing about crematory emissions, and that's why I know that safety standards are really important and we should be looking at those a little bit more closely when it comes to this uniform crisis. But some of the things I learned regarding crematory emissions about safety standards are based on an eight hour day, not a 24 hour day, but an eight hour day. Safety standards are based on a test the EPA did in 1996 on one single crematory. I'm pretty sure what we're exposed to today in 2018 is a lot different than what we were exposed to in 1996. Also, it doesn't matter if like there are three crematories operating in the same at the same time. It's because one they're considered safe. It's safe, safe, safe. One, one, one. Not one, two, three. Add them all up, and oh my gosh, we might have a problem. It's just safe. We don't even go any further than that. Okay. What's similar here with crematory emissions is that uh, nobody's regulating it, and a lot of people don't know that. And when I called a government agency in charge of air pollution in California. And I asked them about what, what was going on with a crematory that's near my son's school. I, they, I was told, don't worry about it, everything's fine, uh, they're following regulations. Pretty sure the guy I spoke to did not know that I knew that there weren't any regulations. Um, kind of easy to follow regulations when there are no regulations. So why would somebody even make me feel like there were regulations? Probably so that I felt a lot safer than I am. So I'll stop asking questions. So that is why we must all ask more, more questions, especially regarding safety standards. I wrote to Okotech. That is the company that is going to be certifying our uniform. Uh, they put me in touch with a person who works for Hoisenstein. Hoist, I'm sorry, I can't say it, but uh, that they test the uniform to Okotech standards. And that person could not answer my questions regarding the standards. So he told me to write an email and he will then make sure it gets forwarded to the right people at Okotex. Well, I just sent him an email with my questions and tag Okotex. And they got back to me and said that they will schedule a phone call with me next week. I'll let you know what the answers regarding standards are as soon as I find out. I did have an interesting conversation with uh, this Pert Ben, that's his name, and uh, I learned a lot, and I'm very grateful and that Ilkotech's involved because we're definitely gonna be better off with them than we are without them. But the reason why I'm making this video is because, it's because just because it, the uniform is being certified and it will be tested for safety doesn't mean you, you are completely safe. American Airlines is doing this big marketing, like, thing about Okotech standards and like we're the first airline and I thought we were the first airline to get Okotech standards but we're not we're the first uh, airline to get the label again words matter it's all about a label and when I asked why do we need this label I was told oh well we've been working with Lufthansa for 10 years this is important and it'll come back up there's a reason why he told me about Lufthansa like right away but Lufthansa doesn't have a label so why do we need a label Oh, because he said we need to be able to look at every single piece of clothing and we need to know that it's Okotech certified. Um, so why? Why do I need to look at a label? Why can't I just be told? Well, I think a few of you know that the uniform that's such a problem right now, um, we were told that it was Okotech certified. But it was certified to a different standard, like uh, the something was certified, but maybe not the complete uniform was certified. Maybe the fabric was certified. This time around, it's going to be the complete final product will be certified tested to their standards. But um, I pulled up the NIOSH report. NIOSH uh, 
We, we called to have OSHA get involved, but OSHA didn't, doesn't get involved unless NIOSH does an evaluation and decides that we, OSHA should be involved. And NIOSH determined that we don't have enough information to determine the uniform is unsafe, so OSHA is not involved. However, in the OSHA report, uh, Okotech is all in here. Okotech, uh, the union, they, they, it was, the union had the uniform tested to Okotech standard. Uh, American Airlines had the uniform retested to Okotech standard. So we've already been down this road before. So now I guess it's just that we need to feel like something else is happening. So now we get the label. So now we're going to talk about uniform testing. So when it comes to uniform testing, you can only find what you're looking for. So if you don't know what to look for, you're not going to find it. Um, this explains why American Airlines, when they tested the uniform, they did not find cadmium. But APFA, our union, did find cadmium. Did American look for it? Did they want to find it? Did they purposely not want to find it? Who knows? It also explains why AFA, our regional carrier uniform, uh, union that represents the flight attendants who wear the same uniform we do, they found chloridane. APFA didn't find chloridane. American Airlines didn't find chloridane. Chloridane is, has been banned by the EPA for 20 years. Chloridane was used to treat termites. So let me ask you, if you're testing a uniform, would you be like, hey, let's test for a chemical that's been banned for 20 years. Let's see if the uniform blazer has termite control in it. Probably not. So that's why just because something's been tested and it tests safe, it doesn't necessarily that mean that it is safe because it just, all you know is those chemicals that they looked for tested safe. So now if you're a company and you're gonna test your product to prove it's safe, because, oh, I'm gonna back up for a minute here, uh, nobody's testing anything. Everybody's relying on the companies that are profiting off of these chemicals to test them for safety. So now you're a company, you're going to test something for safety. You're going to really look real hard to find something that might be a problem. Probably not. You might just test for two or three chemicals. And then you can make the technically true legal statement that the uniform is tested and everything is safe. And wow, you had no idea all these crazy things were in there. Again, if you don't look for it, you're not going to find it, which is why uniform testing doesn't necessarily mean that you are safe. And why you have to not just look at what was found, but look at what wasn't found. You have to look at what nobody tested for or purposely chose not to look for. They're talking, like it's not what they're telling you that you should be looking at, it's what they're not telling you. That's what you should be looking at. So that's uniform testing. So now synergistic effects. So synergistic effects is basically like the crematory, one tested safe, so you don't add them all up. It doesn't matter if there's five of them operating at the same time because one is safe, they're all safe at the same time. Which brings us to the FAA. I don't know if a lot of you even know this, but the FAA has not updated their regulations in like 50 years. So when the FAA says you're safe, it's based on data from 50 years ago. Now let me ask you, does your job look anything like it did 50 years ago? Probably not. So according to the FAA, uh, we can be exposed to a certain level of formaldehyde. That level is based on an eight hour day. That basically brings us back to safety standards, which I'm gonna to talk to a little bit in a moment, but they create these safety standards based on the amount of time that you're exposed to something. It's also based on average weight. And so this is why if you go to the Okotex website, you're gonna see there are standards for different products, different standards for furniture, baby clothes, or baby products, and clothing because it takes your weight into account and it takes the amount of time that you are exposed to something and then they can add more of a chemical that is probably not that great for you, but saves money or... So if you go to the Okotech website, you'll see that they have different standards for different products. And now let's just look at baby products. So babies are smaller, so toxicity affects them more, which means that baby products, they have to have less chemicals in them, which that's why they're safer. Um, Johnson's and Johnson's, they used to have formaldehyde and baby shampoo in the United States. In Europe, they didn't have it. So you see Johnson and Johnson's and you think it's the same product here or as it is over there, but it's not because they have stricter safety standards in Europe than they do in the United States. And, they, and, and so you, that's why you have to focus on these standards and how these standards came to be. And it's kind of like why I was writing Okotech a letter in the first place, because I have a lot of questions about the standards and what the standards are exactly and, and where, where they came from, where the data that they base their standards on came from. And I'll get to that in a moment. If you go to the Okotech's website, you will see there's a, um, 
on the right hand side they have an appendix four and five I think and they have a list of chemicals 350 that they, they look for those chemicals specifically uh, I was happy to see cadmium was on the list I was happy to see chlorine was on the list so that's why we are better off with Ocotec than we aren't but I worry that people will put so much trust into this label because it's such a well-respected comp company and because they hear the word test and they hear the word Ocotec and then they just assume that everything is on the up and up and then when somebody like me has a reaction it's me not them because uh testing and standards and it's all these words it, but people don't understand that it's this, this these tests doesn't doesn't necessarily mean everything is perfect so they test each chemical to see if the chemical falls within a safe level so let's take formaldehyde formaldehyde has to be uh below 75 ppm parts per million so it has to be and anything below 75 is safe so let's just say it's 74 so there's 74 in the uniform blazer 74 ppm in the uniform skirt and 74 ppm in the uniform shirt okay so when you put it all on at the same time it's not 74 plus 74 plus 74 it's just 74 because you do, that's so you do not add it up it's just considered once it's considered safe it's safe and we just leave it there legally leave it there so if let's say this all added up to 300 ppms for formaldehyde if it were in single piece of uniform piece that would be unsafe and we would not be allowed to wear it but because it's all spread out it's safe but do you really think that sounds safe I don't know and I have a problem with the word uniform and I think that that needs to be looked into a little bit more because see when it comes to a uniform, an airline makes you wear a uniform a very specific way. And that includes at least three to four layers of clothing. But that word uniform is a very confusing word because it's singular. So it's not, it doesn't, so when Okotech says this skirt is safe, I don't wear just one skirt. I don't get to go and put on my jeans or my cowboy boots or my t-shirt with that skirt. I have to wear three to four other layers with this skirt. If I went to work with a skirt and nothing else, I would be fired. Or they would replace me in a second. But Okotex is allowed to certify each piece individually. So I kind of have a problem with them stating that the uniform is certified when it's really each individual uniform piece. And I know that that's just to so some people that might sound like, like, well, what's the big deal? But yes, those words matter, especially in court. And so when people hear a uniform is safe, they just assume that every piece they're wearing is safe. It's just each piece. And, and people need to understand that you don't wear just one piece. And, and these things add up and it matters. Just like um, when they test for safety, they're just testing it that one time based on their standards. And that doesn't include like, you know, what, what it's doing you for, to you for five years. Nobody knows. So that brings us back to Lufthansa. Do you think like, since now that you know that there are so many chemicals banned in Europe, do you think that uh, Lufthansa has as many chemicals in their uniforms as we do? Or do you think their uniforms might be a little bit more safe? However, when I asked Okotex if there was a standard regarding how many chemicals can be in each piece, I was told no. It's just based on each individual chemical and how they test it and whether or not it's at a safe level or not. So it doesn't matter if there's five chemicals or 500 chemicals. Well, let's think about uh, bleach and ammonia. So you're allowed to be exposed to a certain level of bleach and you can be exposed to a certain level of ammonia, but when you mix, mix those two together, they are not safe to be near. So you don't think that anything like that might be happening with these uniforms if there's 500 chemicals or 300 chemicals or you know, even just 20 chemicals. They don't even take the synergistic effects into account. Um, so when I called and he brought up Lufthansa, you know, at first, my first thought was like, well, then that's just gonna make people go, oh, if it works for Lufthansa, it's gonna work for us. And if it's, everything's fine for Lufthansa, it's the same, but it's not the same. And you have to keep that in mind. So just, let's just go back to the NIOSH report. And I'm gonna share with you my favorite paragraph. It is right here. This is the par This is the part where it talks about the unknown chemicals. So NIOSH, mentions that um, some chemicals detected by intertech chemicals and materials were not uniquely identified and were labeled as unknowns or were listed as part of a larger class as aromatics. These 
cannot be evaluated for irritation or sensitization potential since they are not identifiable. So NIOSH determined that there was not enough information to say that the uniform was unsafe. However, they, they admit that there are a lot of unknown chemicals in the uniforms. Like chemicals, they don't even know what they are. They probably don't even have tests for. So do you think that um, Lufthansa, being a European carrier where the government protects them a little bit more, do you think that they have unknown chemicals in their uniform? And so there's another, um, another, there's so many holes in this report and I could just go on and on for days with this, but just for this video, um, there's another thing I think is interesting. Just this one paragraph right here. I mean, there's so many paragraphs I could share. Okay, here it is. This, this one right here. Here's what it says. The list comprised 24 potentially skin sensitizing agents and 44 non-metallic potentially irritating agents. So we had 24 potentially skin sensitizing agents and 44 non-metallic potentially skin sensitizing agents. Do you think Lufthansa has that many in there? So to compare us to Lufthansa, it's just, it doesn't even, you can't do that, but they're doing it. And they're doing it for a reason. And my guess is like the crematories because, you know, you need to make us feel safer than we really are. So again, I'm glad Ocotex is involved, but do I think that just because they're gonna put a, a label that, that their, it, our uniform meets their standards, do I think that's enough? I do not. I think that the uniform standards uh, need to be looked at. And that's why my questions are, um, where did they come from? How many hours a day are we, are we allowed to be exposed to these um, chemicals? Because if they've been working with Lufthansa for 10 years, my guess is that a lot of these standards are, have been developed around a foreign carrier. And I don't know if you have friends that work for foreign carriers, but their work days do not look like mine. I have a friend who worked for Air France, and when she saw our bid sheet, which was just like our schedules on paper, she couldn't even believe what she was seeing. She was so shocked, she took the bid packet back to her crew because she knew they wouldn't believe her, because she couldn't believe we were allowed to work this many hours. Um, some airlines, actually regulate the amount of radiation they're exposed to. Not in the US. Uh, in the US, there's so many flight attendants that are working 120 hours a month, especially the new people. Um, do foreign carriers work 120 hours a month? No. So are the safety standards going to reflect my work environment or their work environment? And you know, also, who gave Ocotex the information to develop their standards? Probably an airline. Well, you hear how the airlines talk about like pay in the media. And I know they, if they're talking about a new flight attendant pay, they'll, they'll still like mention the average flight attendant makes 40,000 a year because they don't want to say what a new flight attendant works. I mean, what they make. I mean, maybe some of you made over 40,000 a year, maybe a lot more of you don't, but think about how long it takes to make that kind of money and are you just working your schedule? So when an airline shares information about what my job looks like, are they sharing work hours? Are they sharing all the hours that people pick up to make ends meet? Also, uh, work. let's talk about work schedules. Uh, that doesn't include time on the ground. Does Ocotech even know how much time we spend in a uniform when we're not officially working? So that their data, does that, is it just like our scheduled hours or does it actually reflect what our work environment is truly like? I mean, unless you're a flight attendant, you don't really understand how this job works. So that's why I really would like to know more about the safety standards. And as soon as I find out that information, I'll share it with you. But, um, so I have a lot of questions about that and I wrote some of them down. And, um, so I, I wanted to, I, I did ask like, is the uniform tested to the same standards as retail? They, they like to talk, Ogotech oh, likes to talk, use the word global a lot. So they're global standards. They have one standard for uniforms, which means they don't want to keep creating new standards. So they test to a, I don't know, they would say probably a higher standard because of the European carriers. However, um, because the European carriers have more, have stricter, um, just stricter everything. I mean, is, does that really help us? I don't know. So I have a lot of 
questions regarding that. But um, I really would like that in print because I can't tell you how many times people will say something about retail clothing and try to compare it to a uniform and you can't compare it to a uniform because you cannot wear a regular piece of clothing like we do a uniform and if you tried it would fall apart. A uniform has stain repellent. It has formaldehyde to make it wrinkle free. It has water repellent which could be Teflon. It had, there are a lot of things that they treat the fabric with. So, so when they play this game um, about the fabric, whether it's wool, non-wool, whatever it is. It's not necessarily, it's not even that. It's what they're treating the fabric with to make it more durable. And one of those chemicals is formaldehyde. Now, why would an airline want to skew data so that we could be exposed to more formaldehyde? Well, it's cost-cutting saving. It's a cost-cutting measure. Um, so formaldehyde is, it, it may, it's a preservative. Um, okay, think about how, like, maybe you've heard that rumor about how that olive, the American Airlines removed an olive and it saves a company 40000 a year. Well, imagine how much they will save if 60,000 people are not ordering three to four uniform replacement pieces at the company's expense. Imagine how much they will save if that uniform actually lasts five years. Okay, a regular retail item is not gonna last five years when you wear it the way we wear a uniform. We wear a uniform at least eight to 10 hours a day, <clears throat> maybe 15, 20 days a month. So that's a problem. Also, that reminds me, standards. Are they testing to like my environment with little ventilation, a closed environment? Um, probably not. That's gonna make a difference. Uh, I asked, why do you think airlines didn't need certification 10 years ago? Oh, I, I'm pretty sure that has to do with the uh, synthetic chemicals that we're wearing now compared to like two years ago when we didn't need certifications, when we never even thought about chemicals in clothing, uh, when nobody in management or a uniform manufacturer or on the uniform committee made the statement that reactions are to be expected. Like reactions were never to be expected two, three years ago, why are they ex to be expected now? Well, you know, Southwest Airlines, they make their uniform dress out of plastic bottles. So do you think Lufthansa is making their plastic, you know, using plastic bottles in their uniform? When you hear the word retail clothing, especially from someone in management, you need to listen a little bit more closely. Uh, a president of American tried to try to say that there was nothing they can do by actually making this, make, <laughs> stating that, well, uh, we can't avoid passengers in retail clothing, so like, there's nothing we can do. But see, we're not wearing retail clothing. Retail clothing isn't the problem. So when you hear the word retail clothing, you know they're skewing data and they're trying to hide information. So I, I asked about why, how I'm like natural fibers versus synthetic materials, to see if they will actually put something about that in print. Um, I mentioned that quote reactions are to be expected and why they were never to be expected before because see this is Okotex and they're like a big deal so if nobody probably understands clothing more than they do especially since they're the experts of safety and clothing so they should be on be able to an, uh, answer that particular question um, however this per every time I talk about the uniform situation somebody tells me that somebody at Okotex said oh but you can't avoid formaldehyde well, I talked to the person who actually said that and I called him on that because you can avoid formaldehyde. And that is a false statement. And he made that statement on purpose, which makes me ask, who's he really working for? And what is his motivation to make such a statement? When I called him on it, he, he actually said, oh, well, uh, you know, we can, when you, you know, VOCs are in the air and then uh, everything's got off gassing. So, so basically what he's saying is that because things are off gassing, but what he's talking about is air pollution. So yeah, they can make a formaldehyde free uniform, but see, then you're going to walk out well, anywhere. You're going to be anywhere and something might be off gassing. And that's how he can make the technically true legal statement that there's no such thing. You can't avoid formaldehyde. Okay, that's a, there's a big difference between air pollution and um, a airline trying to put a lot of formaldehyde in a uniform so that they don't have to pay for replacement pieces down the road. So why would a representative of Okotech, really the other the lab, why why would he say that? That's what I want to know. I asked that question. 
Um, when I hear back from Okotech, I will make another video. So that's it. I hope you learned something and this is all really important. And just know that just because something tests safe doesn't mean it is safe. It means, especially when people are having reactions, you know, that's my biggest problem. When there are thousands of people that are suffering and people can just go, oh, but it tests safe, so it's safe. And it's you guys, you're wrong. No, it means you need to look at the test and you need to look at the standards and you need to ask questions. Okay, thanks, bye.